weather in Chicago, but SeatGeek Stadium is ready, and this Super Saturday presented by Ally is underway in Illinois. Chicago Red Stars and Racing Louisville. Mike Watts, the former Penn State Nittany Lion, Anna Witte on hand. Is this driven away by Neely Martin, the center back rookie out of Alabama? We'll pair with Gemma Bonner for the second time in a week. Bonner coming in from Man City. Pew. Pew crossing dangerously for Rachel Hill. And Racing Louisville does need to be patient and be cautious of having Pew up top there in this game, not allowing Pew to turn the way she did. She had no marks on her when she turned. Pew couldn't pull that ball out a little bit more to find Hill. It could have been a lot more dangerous for racing in the 18. You saw the corner flag there. Pride rainbow on it. This is Pride at the pitch. Their annual Pride match. A portion of the proceeds received from Pride ticket packages donated to Howard Brown Health and the CRS Cares Foundation holding an auction benefiting that charity as well. As this flies out of play part of Pride Month around the NWSL. Louisville hosted theirs on Wednesday against North Carolina. That flew out from right. And Michelle Betos will put this in play. Anna trying to describe being a player and thinking, okay, we're going to kick off at 1 o'clock Central time. All of a sudden it's 3.15 and you're finally walking out for the anthem. can be definitely difficult to adjust to different times and having to warm up twice in a game, but it doesn't really matter. You have to make sure when you show up, when game time starts, you have to be ready to play. But definitely can be frustrating, especially when you step out on the pitch and it's still raining. Look at all this space for McCaskill as they've broken the line of Chicago pressure. McCaskill totally unimpeded. Finally leaves it off. Salmon making the uh, frontward run. And a good run by McCaskill to take all the space that Chicago gave her. But that miscommunication from Salmon and McCaskill, and those two haven't played together much, if at all, just a few minutes in the last week or so. So miscommunication, Salmon didn't know that McCaskill wasn't going to try and rip a shot right there. But something those two players will eventually learn as they play more minutes together. The slide in there is a harsh one. Di Bernardo latching on to her right leg. Free kick conceded here. play to start yet. Greg Dopka does the honors. This is my whistle. It is what I say I am. All right. Set piece for Tierna Davidson. Who's one of three red stars in the 18 for the upcoming Olympics in Tokyo. Caught by Betos. Haskell bounces off Gatra. Slide in a tough one there from Cola Prico. You listen to these two coaches, and on Chicago was dealing with five, six, seven players where the medical staff thought best not to play in the midweek game against OL Reign, a 2 0 loss for Chicago. For Louisville, the conversation was are we going to make 11 changes? Ball across with Nagasato being chased into the corner. And ultimately, this may be a much better idea of an ideal 11 than the alternative for both sides. You just wish the rain had waterlogged the field a little bit before we got going. A lot of players were left off the starting 11 due to injuries in the last game for the Red Stars. However, they're got getting back on the field now, getting a team that now has some continuity together. They've known each other. They've played with each other before. You can see their confidence now that they're stepping on the field together. Already have two crosses off, a good set piece in the box. Now it's about communication, especially 
in weather like this. Chested down and sent ahead by Pugh toward Watt. And it'll careen out over the line. Corner Chicago. You saw Rory Dames a moment ago. There's Christy Holly taking over the expansion franchise in Louisville. He's gotten a fair amount of praise from other coaches in the league. Just a difficult team to beat on any given day. Said that the leadership team, Bados and McCaskill, chief among that group, convinced him not to make 11 changes against North Carolina. Although McCaskill, among others, either did not start or came off before the 90 minutes were up. Service here is away. Hold a preco. And Racing getting both of their wins this season on the road. They're proving they can get on the road and get a win together, which is important for an expansion team. Because this is an unforgiving league, and both coaches explained that to us over the, the course of the last week or two that are involved in this game. Chicago's case, you go away to OL Rain, concede in the first minute. Roy Dame said it is very difficult to climb back into a match under those circumstances. And Christy Holly, having seen his side get walloped 5 0 at North Carolina and 3 0 at Portland, is aware that lumps will come from time to time. It's just about learning from those things. He said after the match against North Carolina at home on Wednesday night, we don't celebrate losing, but we do celebrate growing as a team. This will get out of play. It's, it's a long season as well. So we are still in the middle, even towards the beginning half of the season. There's a lot of, like you said, growing pains and trying to understand each other's rhythm, how one another move on and off the ball, meeting people for the first time. So there's still a lot of learning to do for a lot of teams around the league and a lot of teams like the Orlando Pride and, and to some extent the OL Reign have the privilege of having experience of playing together for a while. Include the North Carolina Courage in there as well. Comes back to Alyssa Nair. Number one on the depth chart for the U.S. national team. Playing in this final game before going off to Tokyo. How about McCaskill? McCaskill, oh, Nair got up there and swatted that away. There is something going around this league right now. Fishlock did it, Marta did it, and certainly McCaskill tried it. And well done by Alyssa Nair to stay on her line and not be picked off by that ball. McCaskill picks her head up, and she thinks she can chip Nair there, but Nair gets up and hits that ball. And McCaskill, what a good job of seeing and pressuring Nair at the beginning of the game, seeing what they're working with with Nair, and now that creates a set piece opportunity. And it is McCaskill driving, knotted at the near post. And it'll get out of play. Racing's had a difficult time starting up the attack for this team. So only eight and a half minutes into this game, McCaskill's creating attacking opportunities, a set piece opportunity right now. Louisville's got some players on the, on the field right now they didn't have in their last game. So this should be encouraging to see, especially for Coach Holly. Ebony Salmon starting up front. CC Kaiser returns from a nasty knock last weekend. Didn't feature against North Carolina midweek. Emily Fox, Yuki Nagasato into the starting 11 as well, who can really thrust this attack forward. This will come all the way back to Kruger. Wright kept it in. Cola Prico. Gatra. For what it's worth, to your point, Racing has not scored a goal in the first half of a game yet this year. This is their seventh. Chicago, seven goals allowed in the first 30 minutes. So perhaps that'll play out, perhaps it won't. Rory Dames there, head coach in Chicago, going back to 2011, predating the NWSL. Louisville, only 33 shots this season. 
the worst in the NWSL, but this could be the game where things change for Louisville. We see them, them in the attack more, and, and Chicago set, sits back a little bit more as racing comes at them. You saw Gordon and Davidson sitting back as McCaskill drove at them. So next time Louisville gets the ball at their feet, what will McCaskill and Gordon, rather Gordon and Davidson do? Meanwhile, it's a Chicago team that Corey Dame says the stats bear it out. The expected goals, as opposed to goals scored, among the worst differentials in the league, it means theoretically they should have scored at least three more goals than they have statistically. But their box entries, a lot of the primary stats that Roy Dames finds most critical, largely gone their way. That's Cole Aprico leaping into a challenge and going into the book inside 11 minutes. Nicola Prico trying to win that ball over Malay. She gets her left hand into Malay's face. Dangerous situations right there when two players are going up for headers. Fox and McCaskill over the ball. First headers away toward Hill. Hill muscled off the ball by the 20-year-old Salmon. And Salmon showing her strength to come back and win that ball. She keeps the ball in the attack for racing and as that number nine position, good job working back and staying with Hill. Catra working through DiBernardo. And that build up right there that you see from Chicago, those one, two passes just to get racing confused is exactly what Chicago needs to find their rhythm. They've got players on the field that know each other and can do that, and that's why we're seeing them be able to build out of their back half. Yuki Nagasato. Fox trotting slowly down the line, finding Nagasato now. Good streaking effort in. Kruger lays off, and Di Bernardo will play this quickly. Covered by Bonner. Second start in a racing kit. The field is slick today, obviously, with all this rain that's moved in. So keeping the ball on the ground, being aware of how fast this ball is going to move on this pitch because how slick it is. You saw that in that last pass. Bonner was trying to pass out wide. That'll be another important thing to keep your eye on. To be fair, this field is in pretty remarkable condition given the amount of rain that's poured down over the last couple of hours. Nagasato. The turn by Salmon. Skies up and the bounce, and Nair brilliant waiting on that with Malay charging. And Salmon doing a good job dropping off her line and finding that space in between Gatra and Cola Prico. There's a lot of a big gap in between that Chicago back line. So if Salmon can continue to drop off, drop off, receive the ball, and take a shot right outside the 18, that could be a dangerous spot for racing to find a, find a goal. This is Gordon. Di Bernardo. Look at this. Excellent from right. Betos. That pass left her a bit uneasy. 
Rolled into the penalty area, and down goes Pugh. And the whistle's late, but arrives. This is a free kick. It's just a, a hair outside the penalty area. And that ball gets played into the 18. Mal Pugh tries to keep with it. And Simon comes in behind Pugh, and that's not where you want to draw the foul. You just want to continue to force Pugh playing backwards. That's okay if Cole Aprico receives the ball, but that's not where you want to foul a Chicago Red Star. That contact began inside the penalty area, and apparently the line of demarcation where that became a foul was narrowly outside because it's practically on the line. That call could have been contested. This is struck right into the wall by Gatra. Gatra again. That's blocked, and I don't know if Betos had any chance at that if it snuck through. And an injured player down is Bonner for racing Louisville. Bonner took that second shot by Gatral right into the stomach. Gatral not only got one opportunity on net where it looks like it hit them first, but she got two shots. And that's so dangerous to allow Gatral to get two opportunities within your 18 on net. Bonner taking a little bit of a knock there, and some of the Louisville players are up and moving in the 17th minute. Nothing imminent there, however. Throw here for Fox. There's good news, it's 74 and raining. This might actually be somewhat refreshing. This will go all the way down by Nair. But the field is certainly played slick. And the fans who have come out have come dressed for the occasion without doubt. They shuffled forward. Look at all this space for Di Bernardo to attack looking to find the pass. Di Bernardo continues off of Fox, rolls this back. Still more for Chicago. Kruger, as far as Olofsson. And racing, playing in that same line that Chicago's playing in. They're playing more of a 10 than a six position. So Di Bernardo able to receive that ball, facing up, taking on Louisville's defense. And Bonner and the communication between Bonner and Martin needs to be on today in order to slow down Di Bernardo. And then you, get, you have to deal with Watt and Pew up top. No rest for the weary? I don't think so. <laughs> Watt, this does roll all the way through and hit on the first time by Wright, who's been very aggressive getting forward. And Martin does not stay with Watt, allows her to turn away from the ball. Martin needs to keep tracking back with Watt there, keeping her outside, forcing her to the end line, not getting across inside. And that's a dangerous opportunity for the Red Stars to allow Watt to receive the ball and face up towards net. I didn't know any better. I think Wright was playing as a left winger right now. Tactically a very good move by Coach Dames to move Gordon into that center back position. Gordon's been on the field all season long. She also has experience playing right next to Davidson and keeping Kruger and right out wide. Right, who's used to playing more of an attacking position anyway, getting Chicago Red Stars attack started early. However, in transition, 
is where the Red Stars do need to be careful, making sure right tracks back. Rain comes down with a bit more ferocity. Nagasato. Nagasato helped to win it back. And Malay. McCaskill tried to unleash. Took a deflection and all the effort of Nair is for not. Corner, Louisville, 21st minute in this Super Saturday presented by Ally. McCaskill, Nagasato both traded by Chicago over the offseason, return with their new club, racing Louisville. Sides are just one point apart in the standings and a win for either side would, for the moment, get them out of this log jam in the middle of the table. Corner into the pouring rain. Sure-handed by Nair. And the rain is certainly coming down now. You can even hear it. Definitely changes the game. It changes, changes tackle tactically how you want to play the game. But if it's not cold rain, it's never a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Been around many a Great Lake night. With cold and freezing rain. In Chicago, I'm sure they're used to that, but in the middle <laughs> of June, I think they're okay. It is turned over. You can see that water is starting to stand a little bit. It's tracking up behind players as they run. Fox. Leading Malay. And Fox creating an attack for Louisville down that left-hand side. She's able to find Malay and play a little give and go, at least attempt to give and go. Slowing down the game now that they're in the final third of the field, allowing Louisville to catch up. Well, there's a whistle here, and the offside flag had gone up. 23rd minute here, halfway through a first half. It was delayed by over two hours. A look up into the floodlights overhead, perhaps aptly named pouring down from the stands here in Bridgeview and going right over those grates. Still, fans coming out and chanting in favor of the home side. The crowd that came out, no doubt, is partisan on this day. And, you know, you were asking Roy Dames a little bit about it when we spoke to him this week, but the opportunity to come and play at home, this would have been a really vibrant, exciting, joyous atmosphere under any other meteorological circumstance and yet here we are definitely not an ideal weather situation for either team today however we still see those chicago red stars fans still in the stadium and and just being able to sleep in your own bed and and, and play on your own home turf can be so nice and rory dames in a hoodie in a hoodie but neither hood is up you would think right now is when you actually need that hoodie <laughs> on your head. <laughs> this is going to sprint all the way down into backpedaling. Alyssa Nair takes control. Taking care of the ball is really important here. That ball will continue to skid on the field if you're trying to play those big balls over behind. You need to be careful with the type of weight you put behind that ball. Making sure this isn't a game between Betos and Nair just kicking the ball over the field. You see that ball go straight to Nair just because of how slick the field is. Watt lays off. Pew tried to shift that over to the onrushing D. Bernardo. seen much of CeCe Kaiser in this game yet. Getting to a more familiar wide attacking area. 
Build up for Louisville of late has been consistently stymied. Gordon whacks at that. Nagasato stepped in, the help of McCaskill, making Gatra's life miserable in that moment. There's Bados, who's sadly for her and for the team, but in theory, impressively working on what could be a record-setting save season so far. It's been more work, certainly, than she would have hoped, but already closing in on a career high for saves personally. This will find McCaskill floating it ahead for Salmon. And McCaskill does a good job of picking her head up and seeing Salmon making that run into the 18. Salmon giving McCaskill that thumbs up, saying, keep doing that. Keep playing those types of balls in behind because I got you. I'm going to keep making those runs in. And right behind Kruger, she gets right in behind, doesn't allow Kruger to stay with her, and a good look for racing. Here's Sarah Gordon. Hustled away by Aaron Simon. And we saw the Red Stars able to find their forwards feet in Pew and Watt early in this game. But now we're seeing Chicago struggling to get that ball up to the top three players. How will Chicago adjust in this game to try and get that ball to the top three players? Sneak through. Di Bernardo is matched up with Bonner. And you can see a very cohesive back line for Louisville, having Bonner back there with her leadership, her experience, her knowledge in that center back position is so important with so many young players playing around her. Kruger overrun, but maintained by Colaprico. Well shielded by McCaskill. When you think about Bonner, and you've got Martin and Hendricks who've played a, a good amount. Kaylee Reel came in and started last game at center back as well. So Louisville's got some options there. You could argue Salmon at age 20, but also you're bringing in Nadia Nadim, who's a proven track record goal scorer. Potentially seven to ten days away from receiving a visa and getting into the U.S. and moving forward. That appears to be a handball. It is. It's going to be a yellow card to Nagasato, who went to ground. and <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> is there any person who could get a yellow card and laugh like Nagasato does? <laughs> <laughs> and Nagasato, you could tell she, she just, with that slick field, it's so hard to get your footing. She tries to throw her head in front of it, maybe her hand. Ends up drawing the crowd the card and the handball. Due to these wet conditions, having to wring out your shorts and your jersey, and looks like the rain's finally lightened up in Chicago. There's a good article in Equalizer Soccer about how she spoke with Alyssa Nair in Colorado in the final year of her deal at Frankfurt about potentially making the move over, and that was one of the impetuses that saw Nagasato come to the NWSL. This floats forward. Kruger diving header toward the middle of the penalty area for Kaylee Watt. This will lead to a corner closing in on the half hour mark. Tierna Davidson will take the corner into what right now appears to be an empty mixer. the way through, driven back toward the six. Lifted away from Pew, who extended awkwardly for it. Watt. Watt with speed and the slide in, denying the end line. Another corner for Chicago. 
and Watt creating opportunities as she receives that ball, taking the ball in line. These set pieces are crucial for Chicago, and they're good at getting on the end of these. And Davidson has a great service into the box. The movement into the box, making sure you lose your defender to try and find the back of the net. That's how Chicago is going to put one in. Davidson. Kruger was looping her run back. Out to Watt. That by DiBernardo. Players slipping all over the place. Pew rolls back Kruger. Dummies. There's the shot. Betos lifting DiBernardo's blast over the crossbar. And DiBernardo calling off Kruger there, making sure that ball comes back to DiBernardo because she had such a good angle on it. And that starts from racing, not being able to clear that ball out of the 18. And Pew puts a great ball into the box. DiBernardo calls her off, and that ball just goes right to the top. And a great save by Betos to get up and push that ball over the crossbar. And Betos doing a good job of saving Louisville there. But clearance from Louisville needs to be better. And look, you can look at Chicago, five goals scored at this stage of the season certainly doesn't impress, but moments like that are precisely what Rory Dames is looking for, and that combination play will eventually, theoretically, pay off. DiBernardo has such a fantastic shot as well, and putting her in that position at the top of the 18 to finish and strike one of those balls is exactly where they want her. Gordon just went to battle with Salmon and successfully fended her off. Otherwise, that would have been a foot race. And a foot race, frankly, I think everyone would be pretty excited to see. Two players that have really good mobility for a center back and for a center forward. If you're that man, are you happy right now, 32 minutes? I think there have been a lot of adjustments that Louisville's make that have been really good. They've created opportunities, set pieces for themselves, especially with McCaskill. Should be really happy with what McCaskill's done so far in the center of the field. This is hit off the crossbar near the top of the post as well. Di Bernardo again lashing at target. And this will ricochet into the penalty area and get lifted away. And Di Pernardo in that position where she's so dangerous. She wins that ball from Nagasato and tries to find side netting and just a good position, a good shot by Di Pernardo, unfortunate. The Chicago attack is starting to look more and more dangerous. Pew is offside. Well done by racing to be all on the same page there, stepping up, making sure Pew was offsides. Louisville's defense has come out strong in this first half. They looked good at the beginning minutes of this game. Now can they keep it up with these three top forwards in Pew and Watt and Hill who, who are so dangerous and are going to run at you in this game? Rory Dames there. Hat, but no hoods. Hoodie and the uh, rain jacket as well. Saw him before the game sort of walking the field a little bit out in front of the supporters section down on the left-hand side. This is Pew. Mallory Pew bursting into the penalty area and slip and sliding over the line and toward the boards. Simon staying with Pew, keeping her outside. Well, and there's concrete there at the edge of the playing surface as well. It looked like the, the ground sort of exploded with water as soon as she hit it. She fell into one of those puddles right outside the field. Simon tracking back with Pew and staying with her. Pew's such a fast player, especially with the ball at her feet and a good job by Salmon to stay with her, stay touch tight and force that ball out of bounds. This is Cole Aprico. So much has been made of Mallory Pugh's form in the league and subsequent time away from the national team at present. Not really in all that much consideration, at least publicly 
for that 18 for the Olympics. And if you listen to Rory Dames, I think he thinks in the long run, a full month of getting healthy, confident, in form could be a real jump start to Mallory Pugh's career again. And of course has had so many highs already. You said it there with getting healthy. It starts with Mallory Pugh getting healthy and getting back into her groove. Waiting to see Pew at her top four, and we really haven't seen it because she struggled with so many small injuries. Well, you are currently watching a very rainy day in Bridgeview, Illinois, SeatGeek Stadium. Louisville on the road to take on Chicago. Ball rolled ahead, McCaskill. Nair slides out. This game was delayed over two hours at opening kickoff. Players had not come out to warm up until after that delay. Olofsson will take over. Players from both sides flopping onto the ground. This will run all the way back to Nair. We're 36 minutes in now between the number six team in the table and the number seven team in the table on this Super Saturday presented by Ally. The first time in the regular season since July 15th, 2017, that there were five games on the same calendar day. And back then it was Seattle, Boston, Sky Blue, and FC Kansas City among the 10. 16 goals were scored that day. We'll see how today measures up when it's all said and done. The league certainly looked a lot different in 2017 than it does today, additionally with additional player teams in the league as well. New Kansas City franchise entering Louisville as well. Two more to come. Kaiser, Salmon, Salmon! First start, second goal. Ebony Salmon delivers for racing on the road. And Salmon drops back and to receive that ball. And what a good goal by Salmon. Receiving that ball from the end line. And Malay does a good job of starting the build of this play. And Kaiser, we haven't seen a lot in the attack, but a good assist. And she sees that ball already. Salmon in good position at the top of the 18. Doesn't need to take multiple touches. She sees right past Nair. Good awareness of where she is in the box and where the defenders are around her. Christy Holly said that Ebony Salmon would sort of sneak up on on Christy Holly and sort of say, okay, if I beat you to that door, do I get to start on Saturday? I, it, was, it was constant, we were told. Little bets that she's trying to set up to create the opportunity to start. Does get that opportunity. And Kaiser playing that more natural wide area provides the assist to the new number nine, Ebony Salmon. And the Louisville with the lead here. Their first first half goal ever as a franchise. And we could be seeing the makings of what could be a big part of the future for Louisville. What will be a big part of the future for Louisville is having Salmon in that nine position. And two goals already in the, this season so far. And her just awareness on the field, putting herself in the right positions. There was nobody around her when she scored that one. Came up and caught McCaskill at or above the shoulders. You listen to Rory Dames. He had so much pride in McCaskill's growth as a player in Chicago. And a player that he says, like Nagasato, they do stay in touch a little bit during the Challenge Cup. They were texting back and forth a bit, but come the regular season, trying to be deferential to the club in Louisville. And certainly the players as well said, I'm always around if they need me, but I'll wait till the off season. Certainly they'll share an embrace at some point upon their return after being traded over the offseason with uh, no bad blood. Here's Kaiser finding Salmon a moment ago. And it just shows you the type of communication that's helping this team grow. There's more familiarity with Kaiser and with Malay there in the middle of the field. And that's where it started. 
Kaiser made a run in order for Salmon to make a run. And as these players continue to play with each other longer, we'll see more, more goals like that from racing. And suddenly there's going to be a lot of competition, theoretically, in the racing team. Once Nadia Nadim arrives, and the players getting healthier, Addison Merrick debuting for the club on Wednesday night. We could realistically see this mobile team really power forward into the Olympic break where they're probably the least impacted team by a major tournament this year. Oof. Well, you got to appreciate the effort. Slowing your feet early. <laughs> got to be aware of that in these slick conditions. I don't know that there are studs you could have in your in your cleats that are going to fix that. This ball leading forward. Gordon did enough, and this is hooked away by Nair. Salmon sprinting at Gordon's back. And there in that goalkeeping position just is so good at reading the game, knowing when it's safe to step off her line and challenge such a fast player like Salmon. And when it's okay to stay back and, and, and allow the play to develop towards her. Nagasato battling here with Hill. <laughs> Nagasato again. Second in the 2019 MVP voting in the league. You mentioned the number of assists pregame, 17 over a couple year stretch with Chicago. All lined across. 14 of those assists were to Sam Kerr. <laughs> That dynamic partnership. This will belong to Alyssa Nair in the 43rd minute. Well, speaking of racing's attack, you forget about Emily Fox, who plays in that outside back position, but she gets up so much, and she plays in that wide spot. She gets those crosses in, and she will be a huge threat and a big part of this attack for racing as she plays down that flank and helps build up play for Louisville. Davidson. A bit more direct here. That'll find Betos. And it's been fun watching Emily Fox gradually get used to the professional environment, right? Because when you're at North Carolina and you're almost on top of every team you play, it's easy to fire down the line with almost complete disregard for what's going on. Emily Fox is already capped for the national team and a player who is learning how to make the best of that position in this Louisville system. And tactically as well, as she needs to know when she needs to drop back. And also, she's playing with players who are bigger and, and faster and stronger than what she played with at the collegiate level. So it, it does take a lot of you out of you to play strong against some of these bigger players, just playing smart. Run forward here from Malay. the knee injury at North Carolina, but one of those rare players who started as a freshman for Anson Dorrance. And uh, Christy Holly told us before the season, we knew pretty early on that that was going to be our number one overall pick once the player pool had been established for the 2021 NWSL draft. I'd say an easy decision there. She's already made a huge impact on the field and the NWSL overall was named to the May NWSL Team of the Month. Just her first, first month with the league. So far so good, that's, that's about all a rookie can hope for. This will skip by Kruger, who back in 2019, the last full regular season was actually on the Team of the Month every month of that year. I mentioned earlier, alternate for Tokyo. Murray Dame's telling us this week, seen all the ups and downs within the national team for Kruger. Just so much excitement to see her get the opportunity to go to the Olympic Games in any capacity. McCaskill 
This bounces back. Salmon swiftly forward. Kaiser rolls this toward Nair. And a good touch by Kaiser to try and put that one on net. But McCaskill really likes playing those balls to the back post. Malay's trying to make that run in. And a good job by Gordon to now read and see that Louisville's trying to put those balls into the back post outside of the 18 and, and dropping back and reading that before the play develops. Well, you could say it was a really fast moving first half, but I'm also inclined to think the fourth official doesn't like to stand in the rain. So only one added minute. This ball played through, the flag is up on Kaiser. Frankly, just good to see CeCe Kaiser back on the field. Had a towel over her face, was waving to the supporters in Louisville on Wednesday night after taking a knock around her eye in a Pretty significant cut there. It was unclear on Thursday into Friday whether Kaiser would be available to go here. This is Watt. Watt streaking through, pushed off by Martin. And the halftime whistle arrives. Ebony Salmon scores for Louisville. Side, Ebony Salmon over the ball. Greg Dopka, the whistle, and we are underway in Bridgeview. How much are you really willing to change things if you're Louisville? You, you do have a lead here at halftime. I think I, I, I think you would stay the same. You want to continue to see. They only played 45 minutes together. You want to continue to see all of these players play together. They were successful in the first half. Watt shrugged off the challenge, and now Fox dives in again. Watt drives this through the penalty area, and Kaiser serves that over Hill. Malay in pursuit. Hill rolls. DiBernardo. Well, if you're Louisville and you aren't really looking to make a lot of changes, if you're Chicago, you'd have to say there were enough positives in the attack that, especially DiBernardo, you just want to keep Keep on keeping on, I suppose. Continue after what you've been doing. In Chicago, pressing Aaron right up early. You saw her just in the 18. Kaiser having to drop back and support her and, and cover her. Chicago's putting a lot of numbers into the attack earlier. CC Kaiser. Taking off McCaskill. You finding Hill. <laughs> you can plan for most things, but that apparently is a uh, you gotta, <laughs> dead spot on the field. You got to plan for those types of balls and then passing balls through uh, kind of a puddle where the ball just keeps skipping. It could either stop or never stop in these conditions. As a player, are you over the course of a half as you start attacking a different direction, cognitively trying to remember those areas, or is it maybe too much to focus on at any given time where exactly those puddles reside? Maybe a little too much to focus on unless there's one that's really bad. Then everyone's in the locker room <laughs> telling everyone <laughs> where not to play the ball. Pew, dangerously. Gatra will let this run by, picked up by Colaprico. Dame's whiteboard price says this is Lake Michigan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right back in that close to the bench, middle of the field. <laughs> Good draw. There's the service, and Betos will collect. Good draw. Really only had Pew there in the box. Simon doing a good job of staying close to Pew, so. Keep swinging that ball around if you're Chicago. Not many numbers in the box that put that ball in. <laughs> kind of being Hill who got that service in and that combination on the right-hand side with Gatra could prove really vital to success in this second half for Chicago. Few. Races by Simon. And drives this through. Betos wafting this beyond the run of Di Bernardo. Betos almost, you 
feel like she knew where that ball was coming. She stepped off her line to clear it. Didn't necessarily have to come out, but it was great that she did. Acting like a field player, clearing that ball. Watt. Thought she had isolated with Neely Martin. And the supporting defense comes from behind. Hannah Davidson. Aaron Wright. Kept this off the line, tries to chip around Simon. Good defense by Simon, allowing Wright to play that ball, but stepping in between Wright and the ball as soon as that ball is played. And Racing's defense looking good, especially their outside defenders staying with Watt and with Pew and with Wright when Wright comes up into the attack. And Racing needs to continue to do that here for the next 40 minutes. This came off Malay. Throw for Chicago. We're five minutes into the second half. And this is good effort by Watt, who's eventually overtaken, but this will find Colaprico. Room here for McCaskill to explore. Good swarming start from Chicago when they do get into the final third. Run from Pew, a lightning bolt down the left-hand side, serving again, and Bonner this time. And Bonner cut a little bit in transition. Bonner's hips weren't all the way turned to the field, so that ball went out of bounds for a set piece. But whenever Pew receives the ball, she's never going to cut it back. So Louisville, just get on your horse and start going with Pew as she takes the ball towards the goal. One thirty-four chance behind the goal. Across, Kruger the target, Pew! With a laser, Beto sent it aside, Kruger ultimately watches this deflect out for a corner. And Beto sees that ball coming in through all of the defenders in the box. Beautiful ball in from Davidson. It gets knocked out to Pew, and Pew takes a one-touch opportunity on net. But all credit to Betos right there. She sees exactly where that ball is coming from, comes up with a huge save for racing. Is there an equalizer coming for Chicago? So come to the backside. Watt. Watt. A little air under that. And Betos calmly makes that catch. Chicago's getting those second chance opportunities when it comes on these set pieces. Racing has to make sure when they clear the ball, the ball gets out of the 18, gets high and wide because Chicago's good at getting their foot back on it quickly and putting another shot. Updates elsewhere in this Super Saturday presented by Ally. Four games on Paramount Plus here in the U.S. And a game on Twitch as well. Gotham taking on O.L. Reign right now. Mitch Purse is added to her account. Watt leading touch. Watt continues, gets to the end line, fires this across. Somehow kept that out. Pew facing up. Pew's always going to receive that ball and try and face up in a good communication between Watt and Pew to find that ball penetrating through the racing defenders. And Simon just stays with Watt that entire time. It looks like that code ball could have gone out of bounds, but a lot of credit to how Salmon is handling these attackers for the Red Stars today. Kaylee Watt starting to really make an impact on the offensive end in this second half. 
Haskell against Kruger. This will be a throw for Louisville over Rory Dame's dismissive wave. By the way, you can look over to the seats. You see the Canadian national team logo there, the Chicago Fire. The Fire have since moved to Soldier Field. The Canadian national team has actually been playing games in Chicago at this venue in World Cup qualifying. So it turns out the Red Stars are not the only tenant at present at SeatGeek Stadium in Bridgeview. Three other games tonight, the NWSL on this Super Saturday presented by Ally North Carolina Portland, 7 Eastern and 6 Central. Whistle blows there, Houston, Orlando, 8 o'clock Eastern, and Kansas City, Washington will close out the evening, 8.30 Eastern time. That's a red, a second yellow for Colaprico. Colaprico is sent off here in the 55th minute. Chicago will play with 10. Colaprico, you can see so disappointed walking off the field on that one, but when that ball is played in from LA, Colaprico keeps her hand on the racing player, and, and, and instead of trying to run with her, she draws a big foul, pulling down a racing player and, and draws a second yellow. You really can't argue with the yellow card given the situation, but without doubt, that's a frustrating situation now for Chicago and Louisville. Try and get this road victory. They're looking for insurance now. McCaskill, ball bounces down in the six, and there's the goal. Nagasato, the former Red Star, scores in her return to Chicago. 2-0 racing. And McCaskill does a good job of playing that ball in behind the Red Stars defense. And Nagasato does not stop. She follows that ball as soon as it pops right back out. Nagasato just continues to follow that run. And Davidson can't clear it with her head. And Nagasato just needs to put her left foot on it, get it right past Nair with a one-touch opportunity, putting racing up by two. Nagasato's first goal in Lavender, 56th minute. And Louisville, you'd have to think, can taste it now. Lost away to Washington, drew away to Gotham in the Challenge Cup. Their two road games during the regular season, a 5-0 loss and a 3-0 loss to two of the Giants in this league, North Carolina and Portland. You would typically put Chicago up in that, that general stratosphere. When you lose the 11th player on the field, the tempo certainly changed clearly for racing. They saw confidence as, the, as they went into that set piece. Uh, but if you're the Red Stars, you are very frustrated that, that that happened so early in the second half, especially in these conditions with a team that are still trying to work out the rhythm of how they play together. You want to make sure there's, or you want 11 players on the field during this time. Fox will walk away from this. And if you're Chicago, you think back to the game against O.L. Reign. That was a 2-0 loss in Tacoma. And you think about who was out. Hill, Kruger, Gatra, Wright, Colaprico, Pugh, and Ertz. And Watt played about nine minutes. You look forward, Julie Ertz theoretically will rejoin the team for the first time in the regular season, essentially, after the Olympics. Kruger going as an alternate to Tokyo. Alyssa Nair going to Tokyo. And Tierna Davidson will vacate the center back job as well. And a lot of star power has, has been missing in previous games and will be missing from this Red Stars team. So it's gonna be up to Watt and Hill and some of these big time and big leaders on this Red Stars team to carry the team, including Wright, who's got a lot of experience with this team and, and as well as Alyssa Motts because she's, she's been around this program for a while. She understands what this program's all about and, and what they're trying to do in order to be successful. There needs to be players that 
need to become vocal leaders if they're not already as we head into these Olympic situa into the Olympics. And realistically, there was time not so long ago that you would think that Gatra and Pew would have been in the mix for a major tournament for the U.S. as well. Salmon pursues at the back of Davidson, who's come up a little bit lame now. They're going to stop play, and Tierna Davidson, the outstanding young center back, 22 years old out of California, played at Stanford, the youngest player on the World Cup roster for the U.S., appeared to maybe roll her ankle the way she was gesturing. There was a sub coming for Chicago as it was. Katie Johnson had handed her card over and Rachel Hill will come off. Johnson draws applause and brings some of the instructions out to Kalia Watt. Look at this from Salmon. Salmon, referee looked at that and instantly threw his hand up. Nothing doing. And with Katie Johnson on the field now, she's the one who's created some opportunities for this Red Stars team in the last two games. She's had seven shots. Four of those on goal, so getting some fresh legs in the 60th minute up top could spark something for this Red Stars team. Johnson yet to score this year in 240 minutes. Play will come back to the foul. Bonner going down. Louisville took the lead in the 38th minute. Ebony Salmon second for the club. Yuki Nagasato scored in the 56th off a set piece that corresponded with the second yellow to Danielle Colaprico in the 55th. McCaskill. Malay catches up. That took an odd carom, and there goes McCaskill streaking in and sweeping it home. Both former Red Stars acquired by Louisville ahead of the expansion draft have scored here in Bridgeview. 3-0 Louisville. And this is a Louisville team that you see, they build up the play and they see so much confidence in themselves and each other to put those opportunities into the final third. McCaskill streaks down the field as Malay takes that ball in line and McCaskill far post left completely by herself. Kruger doesn't track McCaskill back. Nair does not see McCaskill coming in to the 18 and McCaskill just does such a good job of being relaxed, being calm, and just redirecting that ball right into the net. First goal for Racing Louisville for Savannah McCaskill, the vice captain of the roadside today. All the way to the end line, this will be a corner. For McCaskill, that is her sixth regular season NWSL goal. Beg your pardon, fifth. One in the Fall Series, one in the Challenge Cup last year. Three of those were with Gotham as a rookie back in 2018. Corner, Nagasato. Bonner shouting for the offside flag. It never came. Driven ball forward with numbers and right. Out beyond Gatra, unable to get the finishing touch. 
and I like the Red Stars, what they're doing, coming down the field and not taking any time to start building up, putting opportunities in the box, a set piece created by Watt, and then Gutral and Wright getting into the box, trying to get on the end of it. So we're not seeing a Red Stars team giving up. We're seeing them dig, dig deep and, and continue to fight here. This is actually the final piece of the trade to avoid an expansion draft selection off the Chicago roster. Mina Ekic was the fifth overall pick in the NWSL draft, a natural first round pick of the Chicago Red Stars. Nagasato, McCaskill, and Ekic essentially were traded for Chicago to not select a player, rather have a player selected by Louisville in the expansion draft. And look, national team player-wise, Chicago either had to allow a, a big name to leave or choose their destiny roster building-wise, and Rory Dames ultimately decided to do just that. But when you listen to Christy Holly ahead of the expansion draft and after, he said, I would have done a trade with every team if it were up to me. Some coaches like to have that challenge of, of building their roster and, and, and building it with some of the pieces that they already have. And some coaches like to walk into a situation where they have so many pieces and, and see how they fit those together. I think you can walk into a situation that can be difficult if you look at it. it both of those situations could be difficult if you don't, if you have all of the brilliant pieces, but they don't fit together. Here comes Pew. Simon. Nagasato driving this in behind. Salmon. And here comes that 1v1 again. Gordon backing down. Salmon finds the middle. Salmon! Waved at by Nair. That's off target. And Salmon allows that the Red Stars defenders to recover. She takes on Gordon and then Kruger gets right behind Gordon just in case that ball. Salmon gets loose and Salmon just cuts inside and beats both Gordon and Kruger. We're seeing what Salmon brings to the table with her brilliance in these 1v2 situations. Not even 1v1 and Salmon just, she didn't get that ball on target necessarily, but she did get that ball. She did get a shot off that wasn't deflected and, and Salmon just such a talented player up top for Louisville. Aaron Wright came off there. And in comes Kayla Sharples, who does have experience collegiately at Northwestern as a center back, has played some outside back as well. Chicago playing with 10 since the 55th minute. Danielle Colaprico received a yellow in the 11th and another in the 55th, was sent off. Louisville led at the time by a goal. The ensuing set piece scored by Nagasato, and then McCaskill scoring a few moments later in the 62nd. I know there are fans in Louisville watching under sunnier skies as this is dropped back by Gordon who's appeared to move into the center. They remain. But uh, Louisville uh, USL championship side Louisville City is playing their big rivalry match tonight at Lynn Family Stadium so the scoreboard and the board outside the venue both are playing this game and apparently there's already a solid crowd that's arrived ahead of what's affectionately called by fans in Louisville and Indy the Louisville Indianapolis Proximity Association football contest. these fans braving the elements here in Chicago to see it in person. Nagasato splitting this down the line. First intervention for Kayla Sharples. The flag was down, but this will roll all the way to Michelle Betos.
Look, it, it's tough being goalkeeper for an expansion team. That that that's been clear. You know, you think back to Alyssa Nair in the early years in Boston, was shelled night after night and made so many clutch saves for the Breakers early in her NWSL years. Bados has been the consummate captain for Louisville under really difficult circumstances, has actually, in terms of expected goals, led a defense that's allowed six fewer goals than statistically anticipated. That is far and away the best in the league. And Beto stepping into this situation with an expansion team. And her leadership is just as important as what she does in that goal. And, and, and having constant communication, not only with her defenders, but just with the team in general and in helping the team know that we may not be the best right out of the gate, but as we continue to work as a team and together and learn from one another, we could be a fantastic squad. And I, and I think we're seeing a little bit of that right now. We're seeing this Louisville team start to know each other better and understand that if, if you're just patient in this game, it'll start to see things turn out for the right. And I think having Beto's back in that goal is just something that Coach Holly couldn't have asked for any better situation, really. Her experience and just and just what she can do in goal as well. This will get out. 33-year-old Michelle Betos at this point was a star at the University of Georgia. And then time in Portland, Seattle. This just appears to be a perfect fit for a veteran of the league. Getting a chance to really hold the number one job for an extended period of time. Ados was the 2015 NWSL goalkeeper of the year in Portland. Offside flag is up here. Our fan cam brings us some priceless moments of the match. They're brought to you by MasterCard. And there's the view in the bleachers, waves, a couple of beverages. And plenty of smiles here on a rainy, wet afternoon in Bridgeview. Looks like the weather's lightened up a little bit here in the second half. We're seeing a lot less rain than we saw. It was coming down in the first half, especially there <laughs> towards the latter half. It was coming down all through that two-hour stretch where we were waiting to get a timeline. Yes. When might we see the players out on the field? And some of the fans that came out at bus to the stadium. We'll welcome through gate D to get them out of the parking lot as well. This is going to be Davidson. Watt. Watt lashing across to the back post, and it's wide. Sharples. And Watt makes the best out of a tricky touch there. Watt keeps that ball in bounds and is able to turn her defender there. And good job by Sharples to make that run into the box. She's left unmarked by a racing Louisville defender and, and creating chances. And Watt doing a good job of leading this Chicago team and stepping up, putting those balls in the box, racing down this racing team and in keeping Chicago in this game when it comes to just putting balls into the final third and in the 18. Change here for Louisville, Ebony Salmon. Scoring in this one. And it came back in the first half. First first half goal scored by Louisville. Just gets by the outstretched paw of Alyssa Nair. Salmon left unmarked in the 18 by the Red Stars. Puts that one side netting, very similar to her first goal when it, when it comes to placement of the ball and with her first touch. And that ball comes in from Kaiser. It's a lot of confu uh, confusion, I guess you should say, when it, it was raining so hard for the Red Stars, but the Red Stars weren't able to stay intact as a four, and then c communication was a little off there on that goal, but nothing to take away from Salmon's goal. Beautiful shot. Rolled ahead, Pew. Tight angle, Bonner. Came off of Watt. Newcomer here is Sinclair Miramontez. Fourth appearance, third off the bench. 
time in North Carolina, and the conversation was center back, but Paul Riley thought would make a great six. Changes galore coming for Chicago. I see Gatra has already come off. Kalia Watt as well. There's Nikki Stanton among the three coming on. Kenzie Doniak will come in up front. Vanessa DiBernardo comes out and how different this game could have been. Two really good opportunities. And you'd have to argue it would have been tough to finish them, but if she does, those are the momentum changes that can completely alter how Chicago's likely to feel coming out of this game. Sarah Lubert's come on as well. So Lubert and Doniak will help lead that front line. Stanton will try and settle the midfield. That's Bonner or Merrick. What a story Addison Merrick is. There's a good article in the local Louisville paper about Merrick's return from a back injury. There were genuine concerns. She wasn't going to play a minute this season. And about two, three weeks ago, got the thumbs up that she could return fully to training and potentially get back in. Julia Ashley has come on as well. So pretty a notable statement of intent at this stage with Chicago down to 10 and Louisville up by three. A lot of changes on both sides of the field. We could see a different game when it comes to whatever happens ahead of us here for the Red Stars. They really need a player to come in on this pitch, Lubert, to replace what Watt's been doing to keep running and, and to keep creating for the Red Stars. Rolls to Miramontez, who's learning about those aforementioned small puddles that come with the torrential downpour throughout the game, which is picked up again now. Muscling in with Stanton, tossed aside. Free kick conceded. A quarter of an hour to go, all told. And a good look by Kruger to put that ball in the final third into the box. Luber just didn't know that ball was coming in and was too touch tight with the defender to keep that ball in bounds. Sharples leading Kruger. Appears to have picked up the captain's armband late in this one. A couple of pretty significant results in the table. If this holds, and Gotham and, and OL Rain right now are deep into stoppage time. But at SeatGeek Stadium here in Bridgeview, well, it's 6v7. It's a team that's made five consecutive semifinals and the most recent regular season final as well as the Challenge Cup final in 2020. Chicago down three goals and down to 10. 
to this expansion Louisville side that while at times their passing was inefficient and a bit difficult under trying conditions on the road, this is a result that the doctor certainly ordered for them. Louisville must only really love winning on the road, getting their first two wins on the road, third one potentially on the road. Rather, two losses on the road. <laughs> now they're getting there it There we go, there we go. Slowly to Betos. And it's tough. I, you, you think about going to Portland and Chicago and North Carolina, and if you're Christy Holly, you're trying to turn every result into a lesson of some kind. This is a team he built in theory with a chip on their shoulder individually, collectively, in an organization that in Louisville had seen the USL championship side only get the conference finals every year of their existence. And you're seeing this team start to gel together with the international players that they've brought in, players like Merrick starting to return from injury. Realistically, the Olympic break is starting to look like a really rosy time for a Louisville team that's gonna enter that stretch clearly above the playoff line. And Louisville will face teams that will lose a lot of players. So it'll be a good test to see kind of how they work against certain teams and whenever potentially other players are ever lost from other teams. But I just think it's, it's good for Louisville to be able to get on the field with teams that aren't at full strength and continue to work out Kingston. But we're seeing, compared to the last game racing play, this is leaps and bounds of an improvement when it just comes to the fluidity of the game and the knowledge of how one another work. I think McCaskill's gotten herself on the ball. Even though Louisville hasn't possessed a lot of this game, whenever it has been possessed, it's been by McCaskill, who's done a good job of distributing the ball and in keeping the ball for Louisville in, in tricky situations. By the way, announcement there, over 2,600 showed up on a day where I wouldn't blame anybody for not scanning their ticket at the turnstile. But to your point, Portland, Sauerbrunn, Dunn, Sinclair. That's a lot of players to lose in just one lineup. Orlando, Marta, and Morgan. So you could really look around at this upcoming schedule, and it's very possible with the depth that those teams possess, they could still make a really miserable day, but the cards are maybe beginning to turn in Louisville's favor. As Doniak sends this into the stands, sends fans scattering. You know, for Chicago, you look forward for them they're going to be without Daniel Colaprico due to that red card for the game at Washington. They'll host Houston, host an OL Reign side that brought in some players from France who will not be involved in the Olympic Games, and then go away to Gotham in the month of July before the Olympics are complete. So pretty intriguing upcoming schedule for both sides. And that OL Reign team really looking like they're taking form and just the way they played Chicago the other night, their goals were beautiful, their connections were beautiful, the way they were in sync in the middle of the field, in the back lineup, kind of hitting their stride in the same way, you know, in, in the same way in some instance that, that Louisville is as well. And, and then comes the proof that you can never trust anything in this league because Rapino. La Samer, Marajan, Fishlock all started. And Gotham beat Rain 3 0 today. So it's, uh, it's quite the changing landscape. That was a pretty rough fall for Pews back up. And, we, and if we go back a few weeks ago when Chicago played North Carolina, Chicago, rather, Chicago mm -hmm. dominated that game when it came to possession and, and, and winning that game 1-0 to zero and really didn't allow North Carolina to do much of anything in that game. And then the other night we watched 
Louisville play North Carolina and North Carolina dominated. So it just <laughs> it just goes to show you how crazy this league really is and how each game is just so exciting to watch because you really don't know what's going to happen. No, this is a fascinating game of whose line is it anyways <laughs> where the points do matter. But right now the results are just simply all over the place. There are three more matches coming up tonight on this Super Saturday presented by Ally. North Carolina and Portland is less than an hour away from kickoff. Kansas City and Washington, Houston and Orlando playing later on in the evening. <laughs> you see Orlando and Portland jostle for that number one spot in the table as the Olympic stretch of games comes into play. Kansas City trying to get that first win. Orlando trying to avoid that first loss. There's a lot going on on what's truthfully been a pretty rare instance over the past few years in part due to an odd number of teams that every team is going on the same day. Ashley. Home there from Merrick. And you see Fox right there. You're right of your screen now, but Fox is kind of playing in that central midfield position now that McCaskill's off the field. And and, and seeing Coach Holly could be trying to see what Fox could do in that position. She's a great distributor. She sees the field well, just moving her up more into that sixth position. So if they ever need to play her there, rather than playing her in that out back right out back position, outside back position, I think Fox could just be as effective in that in that six role. And at Louisville's best, you could argue that Fox is basically playing as a midfielder as it is. Yes, for sure. You see her <laughs> so far in the attack as well. Great service, and she's putting the Red Stars on their heels and. And the outside backs, Kruger doesn't really need to step or doesn't want to step too far on Fox because Fox can be so dangerous in the attack. You got to be careful in transition, especially in the 86th minute when you've already played so many minutes. Getting back in transition can be so exhausting if you've been chasing for a while. So just staying with Fox as she steps up. There's a push there from Nikki Stanton, who returns to the NWSL after a stint overseas in Norway. Left in January 2020, six years in the league. Told Annie Constable of the Sun Times, just time to maybe switch things up a little bit. An interview back in January. Stanton came back to the Red Stars, where she played two seasons. Lubert. Lubert. Pew. McCaskill. As far as Stanton. Coach Dame said he wanted to see Stanton and Doniak playing more minutes. They played big minutes in the last game against OL Reign, and now we see them playing more minutes in, in this game and playing in those central positions and those attacking positions and, and how they can work with some of his players in the, in the normal starting lineup. 
just incorporating them more into the team and, and seeing how they've grown. That was part of the conversation going into the OL rain game where it's okay, three games in a week, really hot temperatures for the first two. You had to explore your depth a little bit, perhaps a difficult game to put players in for the first time this year for their first start or first 90 minute performance, but needed to see Lubert get on the field. Need to see players like Alyssa Motts get back on the field for a more significant run out because those players are going to be critical moving forward. And it can be so difficult to be thrown into a game a fourth of the way, a third of the way into the season to see where you're at evaluation wise. It's sometimes it's in a sense where you're, you're just trying to get your legs, your sea legs underneath you. And, and I think that kind of proved in the OLO rain game. Coach Dame said he thought they had okay performances, but it's hard stepping into that role as, as, a, as a player expected to play a full 90. And, and not really having a lot of training time is sent away by Mackenzie Doniak in a short week. How do you get the best out of your players under those circumstances? He felt like in the end, given those circumstances, maybe as well as players could have done in that challenge. And today, just an odd day, really for both sides. Well, the weather affects it as well. And you, mm -hmm. you even saw some of those puddles in the field and, and just the style of play. You kind of have to change how you play when it rains like it did. You, you, you play in a game that's delayed. There's so many factors, so many variables that happened even before they even kicked off. Stanton is involved there, and McCaskill's going to glide right by. Advantage played for Louisville into stoppage time. McCaskill dicing. Nagasato rolls this back, driving in, tapped aside by Ekic. Turning shot from Kaiser. Nagasato looked like she could have taken that one with her right foot instead of cutting it back and keeping that ball in play. A good attack by Racing, trying to get into that 18 with just a few minutes left. Trouble brewing perhaps, and there's Neely Martin before Lubert could arrive. Those two were rivals in the SEC, Lubert at Mizzou. Neely Martin for the Crimson Tide. We've got four additional minutes here. Louisville really put the pedal down to the floor after Danielle Colaprico has sent off a second yellow in the 55th. They led at the time by a goal, but Nagasato scored on the ensuing set piece. Savannah McCaskill six minutes later, and Louisville has been nursing a 3-0 lead into stoppage time looking for their first three-point road performance as a franchise. And in doing so, would move them into the upper half of the table, above the playoff line, after what's been a topsy-turvy at times, first seven games as a franchise. Could be two wins from three. You could also argue it's two wins and three losses in their last five, and the combined results were 10 nil the other way. And it wouldn't shock anybody to see, perhaps rightfully so in this scenario, lavender covered colored glasses rather from uh, from Christy Holly after this performance. Yeah, Coach Holly has to be really happy, especially with the amount of minutes some of the, these players have played all week, especially from Malay. I think Malay busted her butt in that North Carolina Courage game, and she was from box to box, and Malay comes back into this game and, and really just, I think having help up top really helped Malay not have to run. She had Salmon up top, didn't really have to chase with her up there, but and Kaiser was back in the game today as well, but credit to Malay playing some big minutes from this Louisville team the past few days and, and helping this team out here today. Yeah, 
There's no quit at all in Nikki Stanton at this stage, that's for sure. Got about another minute here. And you and I have seen teams down three, down a player late in the game, not getting stuck into challenges. There's not a free blade of grass in Bridgeview when Chicago Red Stars are playing. And having a player down, especially for the majority of the second half, is just so hard. There's so many players that you need to cover extra space be to make up for that lack of a player. You can tell the Red Stars are, are, are doing a lot of chasing and, and trying to pass as much as they can. Prideful bunch. Full-time whistle arrives. Louisville for the first time pick up a road victory.